Before we begin, I must say that I wanted to make a short tutorial on how to crimp Ethernet cables, but I could not resist telling a little bit more about the history because this protocol and Xerox Park shaped the way we work in the office and how we connect to the internet. I hate cables. They tangle, they look messy and are not very mobile. Luckily, today we have a lot of wireless solutions for connectivity like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or 5G and they all give you this freedom. However, there is one solution that is simply faster and safer than any of the above. The Ethernet. It went through a lot of changes and updates and the latest, CAT8 has a 2 GHz bandwidth and can reach up to 40 gigabits per second. That's equivalent to sending 13 YouTube videos, 10 minutes each, every second. Wow. However, most probably you don't have CAT8 in your office or at home and it is more likely you have CAT5 or CAT6. This should be enough to send emails, share files, print copies, watch CAT videos and guess what? This is exactly what it was meant to do. 50 years ago. Today you have the single pair Ethernet for industrial applications, power over Ethernet and HDMI with Ethernet, but originally it was developed for resource sharing and collision free networks. Let me explain. In the 1970s, Mr. Robert Matkaff was working at Xerox Palo Alto Research Center in California. One of his jobs was to connect the research center to the internet. Back then, it was the ARPANET and it looked like that. At this stage of the network, it was mostly used by engineers and scientists to share their findings and get access to the supercomputers like the PDP-10 or the IBM System 360 that has 4 megabytes of memory, 32 kilobytes cache and can process up to seven operations at a time. At the top left of the logical map, you can see Xerox. This is the connection that Mr. Robert Matkaff was responsible for. But that's not all. You see, Xerox Park had brought us the laser printer, the graphical user interface, the bow and optical mice, the palm science computer, and many more. Xerox saw the future and also predicted how our work at the office will look like with personal computers. Here is where Robert gets into the picture. If you connect two computers with Ethernet cable, like so, that's not a problem. You can view, edit and transfer files between the two. However, as the network grows, the chances of two computers transmitting data at the same time is increasing and the information might be lost. What Mr. Robert Matkaff designed is a system that prevents it. The CSMA CD or the Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection. It was revolutionary at the time and allowed multiple users to share the same medium. In modern Ethernet networks using full duplex communication, collisions are effectively eliminated and the relationship between network load and collision rate becomes less significant. Thanks to that, the probability of encountering an Ethernet cable is extremely high. And that is why, especially in the age of AI, you should not wait for the technician to fix it for you, but take the situation into your hands. It is easy, cost-effective, immediate and customizable. Following the steps provided here, you will be able to choose the proper connector, cable, tools and make a working Ethernet cable. Moreover, if you just want to buy a new cable, those steps will help you to choose the proper one, especially when on TME.eu there are so many of them. The first step is to decide what cable category you should use. Each succeeding category offers better performance in terms of speed, bandwidth and reduced interference. The most common are CAT 5E, 6, 6A and 7. You should check with your internet provider the maximum data rate that you can have and get the appropriate one. 
If the most bandwidth intensive thing that you do is to stream videos, then Cat 5e is enough. You can watch four 4K videos on Netflix at the same time with no problem. But I suggest taking a category higher to be prepared for future expansions. If we go to our website and search for Ethernet cables, we'll notice that one of the specifications is kind of wider. In other words, what type of shielding it has. This isolation is one of the elements that make it possible to transmit at such high speeds. The first letter refers to the cable shielding. It can be without any shielding, braided, foiled or both. The next three letters refer to the twisted pair shielding, unshielded or shielded. UUTP cable, for example, will have no shielding whatsoever, only the twisting and the plastic isolation preventing the bits from scrambling. It is designed to work in places without interferences, such as the area between the computer and the wall. And it is very flexible. The other extreme will be SFTP, which has braiding along the whole cable and shielding in foil form across the twisted pairs. And although it is better protected from interferences, it is bulky and hard to work with. By the way, the first Ethernet cable was actually a coaxial one. When they wanted to make a new port, they would just puncture the isolation and get to the core like a vampire. Okay, so now you're ready to order your patch code because they are just plug and play. But if you want to make one by yourself, you also need a connector. The most common connector for Ethernet would be the RJ45. RJ stands for Registered Jack. It's a system that helps ensure consistency and compatibility in telecommunications connections and equipment. The numbering system used in the Registered Jack designation refers to the specific configurations and number of positions and contacts in the connector. It's just the listing number, the number of the interface standard, okay? What's so hard to understand? Anyways, not every cable will fit every connector. Remember, some of them have shielding over shielding with fat insulation, so once again, let's check the filter categories on our website to explain the characteristics of the RJ45 connector. The most common pin configuration is 8P8C, which stands for 8 positions, 8 contacts arranged in 2 rows of 4. There is also the 8P4C, in case you need only the 2 pairs that transmit data and you don't need the power over Ethernet, which also makes your cable cheaper, because half of it is gone. Like, we can't say because we're gonna get sued by Disney. Here we also have the T568A and B, which are termination techniques. It specifies the color coding and pin assignments for the eight wires inside the cable. It ensures that network devices and Ethernet cables are wired consistently, enabling proper communication and compatibility between devices. They are virtually identical, except that the position of the green pair is swapped with the orange pair. Then we have the Ethernet category, the electrical mounting, and here it is, the cable external diameter and the wire size. Very important to make sure they match the cable that you have ordered. And also make sure to get the shielded connectors for shielded cables. With that knowledge, we can start crimping. The tools that we need are a pair of scissors to cut the cable, a stripping tool to remove the cable's outer sheath, and a crimping tool to crimp the connector at the cable's end. But luckily, most modern crimping tools can also cut and strip, so we don't need extra tools. Step 1. Cut the desired length of the cable. It's always better to cut a few centimeters more. We'll shorten it by 2 to 3 centimeters to crimp the connector and it's always better to have a slightly too long cable than a too short one. Step 2. You should strip about 2 to 3 centimeters of insulation. 
Be careful not to damage the inner wires. After removing the outer sheath, you need to untwist the wire pads. Step 3. Prepare the wires. The inner wires need to be placed in the RJ45 plug in a specific order – T568A or B. It doesn't matter which one you choose. But it's crucial to crimp both ends of the cable the same way and use the same standard in one network. Put the wires side by side in the correct order. Hold them tightly and straighten them. Here's a tip for you. You can now take the crimper and cut the wire ends to maintain even length. Step 4. Crimp the connector. Now, while still holding the wires tight in your fingers, take a connector and insert the wires. Make sure the wires fit inside the connector in the correct order. Remember to always press the wires until they reach the end of the connector. Take the crimping tool in your hand, place the connector in its jaws and crimp. This crimping tool has a ratchet mechanism, which ensures that the connector is crimped with the right amount of force. Oh no, look what happened! I stripped too much of the outer insulation and now my connection doesn't look good. Even though this cable will work currently, it's not elegant and professionals should not perform their job like this. What can we do? You can try again and again to get perfect stripping length and shorten your cable each time. Or you can use what I discovered lately. Pass through RJ connectors and a suitable crimping tool. TME offers three such crimping tools from different manufacturers. BM Group, CK and Logic. Let's pick this one. As you can see, the wires are passing through the connector. And in the end, if you want to be sure that you've done your job correctly, you can always use wire tester like this one. You plug one end of the wire into the first port and the other end into the second port. If all the lights flash, then you know that you've crimped both ends correctly. But I know what you might say. Hey Vitek, do I need to buy all of those tools for one cable? Well, someone told me that you can also try to do it with a slotted screwdriver. Okay, let's give it a try. Well, it might work. However, I suggest using it as the last resort. Even if you buy the tools, it would be cheaper than calling a technician. We touched the most important points that you should know before you crimp, but if you still have any questions, you can ask them in the comments.